Um, so I'm going to start off with questions for Jared. Um, Jared is the playwright for our first production, which is called The B Word. And basically, The B Word is a documentary theater piece. So you got a preview of it, and you also got some of the Welders 3.0 giving responses to some of the questions that Jared asked people for his documentary. Um, so for audience members who have questions for Jared, um, you can line up to ask your question by either doing the raise hand function in uh, Zoom, or you can just type your question in the chat. So I'm gonna start off with a couple of questions for Jared, and then we'll take audience questions. So if you have any, please put them down. Um, so Jared, my first question for you is just, can you tell us about the B word? What is the B word? I'm muted. Um, so yeah, I think you, uh, <laughs> Zoom, it's the world we're living in now. Um, so yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a documentary theater piece. So uh, it was really inspired by conversations that I was having with a lot of friends, specifically uh, at brunch time, um, as I tend to do, and around the idea of the sort of intersection of being black and being gay and feeling beautiful, feeling wanted or chosen, uh, all of those things. And I'd had so many conversations with so many people about it uh, in various forms that I thought, you know, we should have a larger conversation about this. Instead of having these sort of pocket conversations, we should have a larger conversation. And I could think of no greater space to have a large conversation about a thing than on stage. <laughs> so I decided to uh, create this piece. Awesome. I see some of the audience members typing things that make them feel beautiful, which I love. Um, so I see a necklace that someone has, um, red lips shared laughter, jewelry that their spouse gave them, brown golden skills, skin, yes, locks, bold lip. I love that. Thank you all for participating. So I'd love to see more responses. Um, but for you, Jared, what made you take on the subject of beauty, especially as a cis man? Beauty, I know, is not something that really comes up in conversation. What made you want to explore that topic? Um, I actually, I think that beauty does come up in conversation uh, for men. I don't know that we necessarily, uh, for cis men, I don't know that we identify it readily as a conversation on beauty, but I think it comes up a lot um, in wanting to feel chosen, wanting to feel attractive. How do you connect, um, especially as Black gay men, the idea of connecting in ways both superficially and not superficially, just how does that happen, right? And, and just through, again, through conversation with so many people, uh, the idea of not feeling beautiful and how that impacts not just romantic or sexual relationships, but even just how you move through the world, you know, feeling uh, not confident enough to go out for certain jobs or even thinking that certain people wouldn't even want to be friends with you because you're not beautiful enough to be their friend, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that you don't feel entitled to share certain space because you don't feel that you look a certain way, you don't fit a certain aesthetic. Um, all of those things um, have come up for me in conversation. So, like I said, it was a very recurring topic uh, at the various brunch tables I've been at. Yes, to brunch. I can't wait till we could go back to brunch after all this pandemic stuff is over. <laughs> Don't you miss brunch? I do miss brunch. Who misses mimosas? Put it in the chat if you miss mimosas. <laughs> um, so I know that you conducted interviews with 10 different Black gay men, and I'm wondering, did anything surprise you from the interviews? Was, was anything um, revealed that you didn't expect from the interview subjects? Yeah, I actually interviewed 15 um, Black gay men. And uh, yeah, lots of things surprised me. Um, I did not want to, I, it felt exploitative to ask really probing personal questions of the interview subject. So, so I didn't do that. Um, I asked what I thought were fairly innocuous sort of questions, you know, when have you felt beautiful? What makes you feel beautiful? Have you ever not felt beautiful? Things that I didn't think were terribly super personal. And I was extremely surprised by how deep uh, some of the responses to those questions were. Uh, things that I absolutely did not expect. Um, there's a, an interview that you didn't see tonight when I asked someone about, was there a time when they didn't feel beautiful? And they talked about how recently they had done something 
uh, they had hurt someone close to them, a friend, they had sort of betrayed someone's trust, and they now sort of struggled looking at themselves in the mirror because they didn't feel beautiful because they had hurt someone that they loved. And that was a thing, and I was completely taken aback by that. That was not at all a thing that I could have anticipated or expected, but those sorts of responses are abundant uh, throughout these interviews. That's deep. Um, so now is the time that we want to open up the floor or the Zoom room for um, everyone who came to attend. So if you have any sort of question or feedback or reaction to what you saw, you can either raise your hand um, using the functions in Zoom. I'm not as tech savvy, so I don't have the instructions on the top of my head, um, but I'm sure someone will put them in the chat for you. Or you can type your question in the chat. Um, so. I'll give everybody a moment to do that. And then when it's your turn, we'll either call on you or read your question out loud. So we'll give everybody a few moments. So it, it doesn't have to be a question. It could be a comment or feedback. I'm curious, can I ask a question of the other welders? Of course. Um, we haven't actually talked about this, but what was it like for you all to answer some of these questions? Um, I'm curious. It was, for me, it was a very um, interesting exercise. I didn't think, when you told us to look over the same questions that you gave to your interviewees, I didn't think it would be, I thought it was gonna be easy. And then when I started reading questions like, when was the time you didn't feel beautiful? Then like, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and it made me feel really vulnerable. And it was a really interesting exercise for me. and it gave me a lot of time to be introspective about a thing that I haven't really given myself space to think about before. So yeah, it was, it was interesting. For me, there were definitely questions that I avoided. I don't even remember what those questions were, but there were some that felt easier in terms of like, oh, I talk about this publicly, or I talk about this in my poetry with friends. I can talk about joy in my birthday, but I feel like there was definitely some places within me that I was like, uh doing that vulnerability work on camera right now is gonna feel it's like it just felt too much at the time so being able to like choose questions and have the space to focus on what aspects of beauty i felt was like was empowering and then also reflective of like oh look cc there's some things that you're that is more scary or hesitant to explore in the world of like beauty and attraction and and who and how people view me. It's definitely, definitely like a vulnerable thing to like breathe through and think about. Um, I think for me, it was really interesting because in between, like I participated in your initial interviews, then I answered these again. And in that time I was laid off from a job where I was in a predominantly queer POC, specifically black majority organization. And I thought it was interesting how much I hadn't realized my own sense of self-worth and identity and beauty was wrapped up in my work in this in this organization. And like it it definitely changed. I'm not sure how much the answer changed, but my my ability to then like be like, well, if if this org, you know, if this idea of blackness wasn't something that I fit into, like it it had me reevaluating everything in terms of the intersection of blackness and queerness and you know, I, I still got it. And I definitely thank my partner, Scott, who's also mixed in black and white for, for really grounding me in, in blackness in a way I didn't realize the relationship could. Um, and I think I, I probably felt more beautiful since then um, in large part because of him. Yeah, for me, it was hard. It was very vulnerable. And I'm somebody who doesn't like to talk about beauty. I don't like to talk about myself that frequently as at least on a physical level. Um, so it was very vulnerable and it was way more of a task than I thought it was, but I was, I surprised myself with um, what I was able to reveal. So for those who don't know, we answered way more questions than what, and, than what you saw in the videos. Um, but I thought it was a great exercise and it really made me appreciate the interview subjects even more um, because of how vulnerable they were. Like seeing some of the video that wasn't in this final presentation. I just have so much respect um, for the people who you interviewed, Jared, because they revealed so much. And it made me feel braver and more honest than even how I interpreted and answered the questions because of what they gave to the project. Um, so I do, I do see some, oh, Kat, were you going to say something? 
Yes, I just wanted to echo what you were saying that the process of answering the questions was a little bit different because we didn't have Jared sitting across from us as we were um, responding. So I really pushed myself not to edit as much or think as much to keep myself in the mindset of the people that were originally interviewed. Most definitely. Thank you, Kat. Um, so I'm looking in the chat. First, I see greetings from Brazil. Hey, <laughs> I don't know what time it is over there, but thank you for joining us. Um, and the first question I have is from Gwydion. Hey, Gwydion. So Gwydion is one of the original welders. So good to see y'all. Um, so Gwydion asked, Jared, I'm curious to know where you are in your development process. Can you tell us more about that, Jared? Sure, yes. Yeah. So uh... I have all of these interviews, of course. Um, all of these interviews happened back in November. So pre-COVID, when you could be in a room with a person and that wasn't a big deal. <laughs> um, so these happened back in November. And since then, I, have, I took the interviews and distilled a lot of common themes that were coming up in the interviews. Um, and from there, crafted several sort of monologues and spoken word pieces. I just call them pieces. I don't really have a great term for them. They're just sort of pieces. Um, and crafted a whole thing. And so by March, I had a whole script for like a solo show. And the idea of the show is that it's me as a solo performer sort of performing these pieces intercut with these excerpts of monologues. Um, I'm sorry, interviews that you have seen. Um, so you will actually see the reason we filmed them was because uh, they will be actually part of the performance. You will actually see uh, these people tell their stories uh, throughout the show. So, um, so yeah, I had a whole script and, and things ready to go in March. Um, was excited in conversations with my director about like, what are we gonna do and how great is this gonna be? And then of course, you know, COVID happened. And, uh, and then a lot of other things happened too, um, as we know, sort of, you know, George Floyd's murder and, all of the other uh, awful, terrible murders that happened uh, as a result of police brutality. And so then I took sort of everything that I had and kind of threw like 70% of it away uh, and didn't throw it away, throw it away, but put it to the side and have been sort of recrafting the show now because the idea of blackness is so integral to the show, it felt extremely tone deaf to sort of mount a thing that didn't talk about where we are in the world now. And also how COVID has affected all of those things too, how it's affected connection and feeling beautiful. Um, just casual conversations I've been having with friends who haven't been able to get their hair cut, right? They can't go to the barbershop. Uh, people haven't been able to go to the gym, right? They haven't been able to keep a regular exercise routine or whatever. So all of those things affecting how people feel about their bodies and the way they look as a result of everything that's going on in the world. So it, yeah, I, I felt like I kind of had to throw a lot of it away and, and sort of rebuild the show, which has been a fun process, so. Yeah, I can't wait to see how it's transformed because of everything that has happened. Um, the next question we have is from Ebony Roseman. Hey, Ebony. Um, Ebony asks, what was the interview process was the, excuse me, was the interview process a way of researching for future plays? Um, oh, great question. Uh, no, um, I was sort of very this project focused. Um, of course, you know, I think with any project, you, you learn a thing and that sort of naturally informs a future thing that you may do. So I think that there will be aspects of this that I will carry with me. But I, I did not specifically go into this thinking, oh, I'll keep this in my back pocket for something else later on. Cool. Next question is from Joseph. Hey, Joseph. Um, would you share what your process is in taking the content from the interviews and craft it into, and crafting them into your play? Yeah, so, I, so there's a lot of interview footage. I interviewed each subject for about half an hour. And like I said, I have about 15 uh, subjects. So that's a lot of footage <laughs> I had to sort of sift through and just sort of over and over and over again, um, go through it. And like I said, I pulled out common themes and threads and it's amazing how you take 15 people who are complete individuals, right? Living their own lives, doing their own things. And yet there are so many common threads and even things where people sort of disagree on uh, or have different perspectives on uh, 
how it somehow connects, right? And so sifting through the footage and hearing things, there was a lot of talk of mothers um, that I wasn't expecting necessarily. So there's a whole thing about sort of mothering uh, black gay sons, uh, part of the show. And uh, there was a lot of talk about the barbershop <laughs> and how some people really love the barbershop and that's a great space for them and they feel really empowered in barbershops and other folks don't feel particularly safe in barbershops. And yeah, so just lots of things to pull out from these interviews and have conversations about. So um, yeah, that was it. A lot of me literally sitting on the floor in my living room with my laptop, just watching hours and hours of footage and making tons and tons of notes. Mm, thank you for sharing that. Um, we have our next question is from Allie Curran. Hey, Allie. Um, has your feeling about the interviews and the piece in general changed because of COVID days and accompanying isolation? I feel like you have answered that, but if you had anything else to add to the question. Um, yeah, you know, I, initially given COVID and again, sort of the, the reckoning with race that we're having in this country right now, I, there was a moment where I wondered if this show, just sort of in general, was tone deaf to the moment. Um, that if, if somehow I were able to mount this show today, would an audience feel that this was just completely out of place for where we are in the world? And I, I thought about changing it. I did. I thought about changing it. I thought about shelving it for later, so for some other time. But then it, a thing that really occurred to me was, you know, so much of course of what we talk about in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement is, you know, Black trans lives matter and Black queer lives matter and all of those things are so true. And I felt like for far too long, we've sort of accepted like, well, now's not the time to talk about your thing, right? We can talk about your thing later. Right now we need to be focused on this other thing that is more important than your thing. And that just didn't sit really well with me. And I thought very much to all the questions of sort of about Black spaces and Black Lives Matter that my life matters and the lives of my friends and my peers and my community matter. And I can think of no greater act of sort of revolution and protest than to simply stand up and tell your story. And so I, I thought, there is no better time than now to tell your story. So I'm telling the story. Amen. All right, we have our next comment. Oh, okay, we have one more question. Um, I see one from Bob that, Bob, hey Bob. Bob asks, what was the design process like for the B word? Or what is, I should say. Yeah, so I've had uh, some great conversations with my uh, director. Big shout out to Raymond Caldwell, Helen Hayes winner. Uh, Raymond Caldwell, hey. Um, we've had lots and lots of conversations about sort of what the show will look like and how it will feel. I don't want to give too much away because, you know, it's got to be a surprise. But I think for anyone who knows me, it will be very Jared. That's really the best I can tell you. It'll be very Jared. Awesome. Well, I see a great segue. So Gwydion wrote, uh, Transmedia, I love it. This is all very exciting. I can't wait to experience the full project. I really wish you could see on my face how much admiration I have for what you're working on, Jared. Aww, thank, you, Gwydion. thank you, Gwydion, which is a great transition because we had asked folks um, in our invitation to wear something or bring something that makes you feel beautiful. And we would love for anyone who feels comfortable to do so to see you all turn your cameras on just so we could celebrate you and celebrate your beauty um, and your beautiful faces only if you feel comfortable, but this is the time to do that. Um, and while folks turn on their cameras, I just want to do a last call for questions. If anybody had anything that was burning or that you're going to regret saying or asking before we leave. And, okay. <laughs> um, and I'll say, if you would love to support the welders, I don't know if you all saw, our board is super generous and, generous and they've given us a $3,000 match. So basically up to $3,000 that we earn from this event will be matched from our board members. And as of the start of this event, Tishan, how much have we raised? You on mute, girl. <laughs> Sorry, we are at the $1,500 mark in donations. So thank you so, so, so much, y'all. <laughs>
Yeah, so if you would love to help us meet that match, we'd encourage you to donate. Um, one of the welders will put a link in the chat. Or if it's easier for you, you could text WELDERS, W-E-L-D-E-R-S, in all caps, to 44321. Um, you could also follow us in, on social media. You can visit our website, www.thewelders.org. Um, and we just want to thank you all so much for coming and spending part of your Saturday e evening with us. We're so grateful, um, especially in these COVID times. It was very hard to determine if we should even do an event like this, because this is generally an event that takes place in person. But we're so glad that so many of you joined us. It's wonderful to see some of you who I haven't, who I've not seen in months. I hope everybody's doing well. And we just thank you so much for joining us. So we're going to still be here um, until everybody leaves. So if you feel like staying, you can. But um, for those who need to leave, thank you so much. We're so grateful. Thank you, everyone. I see a lot of welders in here. Yeah, hey. so much welder love. Hey, hey, welders. <laughs> hey, Michelle, I see you. I saw Latasha. Oh. Hey, Tosh. I see some of our board members. Just thank you, everybody, for being here. Wonderful faces. A few of my interviewees were here. Hey, guys. Hey, Erica. <laughs> I see Diego and Marina and Brazil. Oi, oi, Denti. <laughs> I love that. Because had this been in person, we would not have had friends from Brazil. Thank you all for coming. Yes, beautiful people. Yeah, everybody's like signing out slowly. Hey, Ellen. Yeah, and don't forget to donate. We're only $1,500 away from that match. So if you dig feel deep into those sofa cushions. <laughs> oh, a picture. Look at the founding. Is that the founding welders? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Hey. Yes, come on. Come oh, on. Hey, one point. <laughs> Squid is. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, it's funny just seeing everybody disappear one by one. <laughs> like, yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Truly appreciate it. For those who are here, how are y'all doing? In the midst of this pandemic, I see Rachel, I see Gwydion, Deb, hey, hey, Brett, Ellen, Ron. Hannah. Hannah's driving, so please don't unmute. <laughs> How are y'all? So I'm not driving. I'm being driven, so oh. I'm all right. How you doing? Do you want to answer her now? Um, you know, our basement got flooded this week, so that's been uh, fun times. So coming back from my parents' house where we did laundry, which was an excellent thing to do and I'm very grateful but I'm so glad that I was still able to log on for this and see you all I'm so excited sorry to hear about your basement but I'm so glad you were still able to me make it yeah yeah of course how's everyone else and no pressure I know this is not a usual <laughs> place to share yeah this is this is Ron and Susan, uh, I would say we're doing as, hi everybody, nice to see so many familiar faces. I wish I could hug you. <laughs> I miss hugging. Uh, but I, th I would say we're doing about as well as can be expected under the circumstances. We miss live stuff, particularly live theater. And we'll remember the board, so take it out of me. Come on, let's match. <laughs> yeah, tell all your friends. And my enemies. I don't care who gives money. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair, too. Their money is just as good. <laughs> I'm cracking up. I'm cracking up. Are you... I'm going to start... I'm so used to being a teaching artist. It's like, no one's raising their hand. I'm going to call on people. <laughs> How are you, Gwydion? Mute it. I'm mute. I'm, I'm good. I'm writing a ton... I am busier than I've ever been uh, in a lot of ways, and I'm every day grateful for my health, my family's health, the health of the people that I love, 
um, and having meaningful work to do that feels like it's trying to push us all forward on a daily basis. Uh, I, I can't, I, I'm just so, so lucky. Um, and that's it. I mean, I feel a little bit lucky every day um, and just, just grateful. Absolutely. I see Deb can't turn her mic on, but she misses us and hugs as well. Good to see. Good to see you too, Deb. Uh, Rachel, how are you? Hey, um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm working from home, like really grateful to be employed. Um, and uh, yeah, and just uh, what you said, Farah, about like staying home and investing in self-care was really resonant because um, suddenly I was like, oh, I've got all this space. And, and I was like, let's take a look at how you're caring for yourself. Um, so it's been a big, a big theme. Or, oh, we have a question in the chat. Hey, Joseph. Uh, Joseph Singer asks, I kind of should have asked this before, but how can those of us on the edges, I'm a gay white guy, help all of you? Well, we're currently doing a fundraiser, <laughs> <laughs> so that's always great. Yeah, and thank you. You're helping just by being here, and I think also spreading the word. So not just keeping our message and our work to yourself, but also sharing it with others, um, so that when we do our first production, we actually have an audience. Um, it's been hard. It's I feel like personally, it slowed down our momentum a big, a lot. You know, to be in our first year and not be able to produce our first show. Um, so I think spreading the word, keeping up with what we're doing so that when we do have Jared's show, you come and you bring people, hopefully, would be Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you there, for sure. Yeah, thank you for being here, Joseph. Um, Brett, how are you? world is the world, but I'm all right. Good to see that. Good to see you. Our friends in Brazil. I don't know if um, we don't have translation. Do you all speak English? Yeah, there's no English. Diego, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you speak English. You try to pretend. <laughs> uh, thank you for the meeting. I think you are um, beautiful. Thank you so much for this night. Marina? <laughs> yeah, the same. I understood almost everything. And it was a, a beautiful moment. And I felt beauty and beautiful in my soul with you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you for this moment and for the vulnerability you expressed. And all the beauty you expressed too. Beijo, minha amiga. Te amo. Te amo, te amo. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you all so much. I re we received that. That was wonderful what you shared yeah. with me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad that you were able to make it. Um, Allie, I see you on here. I don't know if you're able to join us for real, for real, but how are you? I'm fine. My camera's off because I don't feel beautiful because I just got out of an Epsom salt bath for my achy, achy muscles. Um, but I, um, I'm just really glad to see you guys and, and to look at your faces and, um, you know, just... I, I really heard what you said about momentum, and um, as a, I think the newest board member of Welders 3.0, um, that's the check-in I want to do, um, because I know that you guys have, y'all have been given a very, very difficult task with, uh, you know, inheriting this magnificent, if I do see so myself, uh, theater organization with this magnificent mission, um, and I just really hope that y'all are getting what you need um, to, to carry forward and to keep the morale high because, um, you know, what you're doing and this event reinforces that is just exceptional. So let us know what we can do to help you. I appreciate that, Allie, and we're so glad that you joined the board. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, of course. We have Michael Weiss. How are you, Michael Weiss? I'm putting you on the spot, Michael Weiss. I'm sorry. Okay, Michael's not going to say anything, but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, thank you all so much. We're going to wrap it up for real, for real at this point. But it's so wonderful to see you all's faces um, and to have your support. 
Um, it means so much, especially just relating to what I said about momentum, you know, and I have this thing where I always, this is my personal thing where I assume no one's going to come <laughs> when I plan a thing and I don't know why I have that. So just seeing how all of you join and the fact that y'all are still hanging out just means the world to me and to us. So yeah, thank you all. And yeah, we'll be in touch soon once we have dates for when we could actually get back and gather in person we'll be gathering. <laughs> so we look forward to seeing you all when we do so, but we wish you well. We hope um, you all are doing well, you know, despite the times and that your family members are doing well as well and your loved ones. But yeah, take care y'all. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.